Hi guys, how are you going? Campbell here from Autodidactic Channel. Hope you're having an amazing day. And today I wanted to have a bit of a look at uh, buildings with domes on the top of them. Now we see these buildings all over the world, especially in capital buildings um, and then on things that are mosques as well. And we don't seem to build domes anymore. And there's also another thing that we have that are called stupas. And I've been looking at stupas and I've been looking at domes. And I don't know, I think I've formed a bit of a theory and I just want to run it past you guys. So let's have a look at stupas and domes. <laughs> Okay, so what are stupas? These are stupas, but these are um, stylized, shall we say stylized stupas? So that what I want to show you, this is interesting. You can see this is quite big, that's a building with a door in it. It's got this huge, I don't know what that is, it looks like the hilt of a sword almost, but that's very, very cool. Um, but it's just kind of sitting there on the ground, isn't it? And you can see it's on a hill. This this sort of goes down. Uh, now there's lots of Buddhist stupas as well. This is, and you see, most stupas are actually domes, but that's how they started off. Uh, the the description of a stupa is a, they say it's an earthen mound that's covered in bricks. Now this again, you can see this, and it almost looking like the citadel of a star fort a little bit. We've got these huge, you know, antenna spire things everywhere. This uh, is the one we are looking at before, a different angle, so you can see it is raised off the ground. And just looking like, might be the top of something. Now these are stupas, these are the other ones in uh, Thailand. These are Buddhist. There's actually 72 of these smaller ones. 72 is a very interesting number. Uh, basically, 7 and 2 is 9, and 9 is, of course, um, what I call the God number. Everything equals 9. And uh, 272 is 144, 144,000. Uh, pretty sure that's the speed of light, I think. Um, and then it, it all ties into basically um, the great year in 26,000, you know, the great cycle all this kind of stuff, but yeah, 72, you'll, if, if you start looking at numbers, you'll see numbers like that everywhere, 72, 144. Here's another stupa. Now this is looking a lot more what I wanted to show you. Now as you can see, this is a big dome, with a big top on it. I'm, this, this may be the same one, I'm not sure, no, I don't think it is. And again, raised off the ground, steps going down. An old picture of one. So these, like I said, a lot of them are stylized, as you can see here, stupid. So we've got the dome, then we've got a dome with <laughs> big antiquity antenna on it, and sort of a bit more, and then this is what they call a pagoda. So here we go, look, here we, look at these stupas, big dome, okay, with the top on it. This one, again, big dome, got the top, got a bit of the bottom there, again, Dome. Now all these, this they actually have a. This, this is like a chart of what the different bits of the, the stupa are, uh, as the Buddhist um, architecture and symbolism says. So I'm not sure. I have sort of had a look at some some of those words, but it would need a bit more digging. I'm just wondering if they're actually talking about, you know, antiquity things. Are they trying to tell us something? Because all these different p parts have different names. Uh, here's another stupa, and see how they just kind of seem to rise out of the ground like this. Just a big dome coming out of the ground. Picture of one. Stupa at Sanchi. Another big one. And see, it's just sort of popping out of the ground. It's just a dome popping out of the ground. 
So what I'm thinking, guys, another one. Okay, these are called... See, th these are now called stupas, but stupas really, um, you know, I guess in archaeology they started off as, as sort of you know, earthen mounds that were covered in bricks, but I mean, <laughs> this clearly has a door. We can go in there. So just these weird dome-type things just popping out of the ground. This one looks like it's a modern one. It's got different shapes. Here's another one. So what are stupas? Well, let's have a look at this picture. Can you see this building? Can you see this dome on top of it? And it's got a few layers down and then it starts to spread out. What if the mud flood came and covered this up to here? What would we see sticking out of the ground? Something like this maybe? What do you think? Look at this one. So here are some more like these things. And like I said, when you see, well, this one actually, this is like the pagoda type. And again, they're like towers popping out of the ground. These ones are sort of stylized. So these have been built this way. So I'm not saying that these, you know, little smaller sort of statuesque sort of one type ones are, are the are buildings, but I think that these big ones could be the tops of buildings. Look at that. Okay, so look at these buildings. So if the mud was across here, what would we see? What if the mud was here? What would we see? Okay. What do you think? Because we have these domes everywhere, right? So we have these big dome buildings. And we have things like this, and like this, and like, well, this. Some of them looking pretty old. Look at that one. So, we have these buildings now. This is, <coughs> excuse me, Underground Secrets of Rome, Nero's Golden Palace, or the Domus Aurea. So, if we come down here, it just says, uh, now I can begin to live as a human being. That is apparently what Emperor Nero had to say when his golden palace, Domus Aurea, was finally built. Poor Nero, he must have been living in squalor before he could move into his 300-room abode set on 200 hectares of manicured gardens, fountains, and a huge man-made lake. As big as the Colosseum, actually, they say, the Colosseum sits on top of where the lake was. And every mod con you could ask for in 65 AD, the walls were covered in gemstones, ivory, and pure gold, incredible water features, intricate artworks, even a spinning dome that showered perfumed rose petals from above. Wow. This is Nero, of course. Nero, the overindulger. Uh, he was the guy who watched Rome burn and basically said, let it burn. And they say that this... Uh, this uh, Domus Aurea was built after the Great Fire of Rome. Um, and Nero was, yeah, very excessive. Um, I've read a story that, because he used to hold banquets that just went for days, and I've heard there was a story that said he actually ate 1,000, <coughs> excuse me, uh, 1,000 oysters in a day. So I don't know if that's true, but he wasn't a small man. Now look at this. This is his uh the house he built this is apparently the house that he built now can you see that this is brick this wall obviously we have these domed roofs arched roofs that we see everywhere and again just completely oversized <clears throat> now this picture this is all that the, the uh, Domus Aureus, and 
This is all underground, guys. It's all underground. Now, look at this. Can you see these squares? Different shapes. And up here, can you see this? It looks like there's been a layer of plaster or something on there. And it's broken away. But on the plaster, it looks like we've had artwork. This is a better one. You can see the patterns in this one. Okay, so that's the roof. See, it's broken away here, but look at that. See these patterns and all this art all up here. And you can, you can see the size of this thing. Look at that. It's just ginormous. It's huge. Oh, the height of these rooms is gobsmacking. And to think this is all underground. No expense was spared. Nero liked to entertain in the most extravagant ways a mass of dining rooms and grottos for his guests to relax in, and every room made the best use of natural light. Advantage of the views of the manicured gardens outside. Uh, it's interesting that no bedrooms or cooking areas have yet been found. That is interesting. It seems it was built as a palace, and they say that he... <laughs> when he moved into it, he said, now I can live like a human. But there was no bedroom or kitchen for him. The palace seems to be built for a pleasure alone. Entertainment for the rich and famous. Oh. Modern day New York apartment run by a pedophile. <laughs> ah, no. Um, so this is still inside, guys. Now this is the octagonal room is the most impressive and one of the most important structures in Roman architectural history. Octagonal in design with doorways leading into the center with a round oculus above the center where the bathe of sunlight would have funneled in to light up the room. It is entirely made of concrete, a Roman invention, maybe, maybe not, that was seen in its day as an architectural marvel. This design was later copied to create the ceiling of the, pant the, the <laughs> Pantheon. Okay, so Oculus, right? Big hole in the, in the roof. Look at these, lint these lintels. Look at that. That's made of, looks like it's made of bricks or, I don't know. See, it looks really thin bricks. I've, I've never seen anything like that before. There as well. Very strange. So this is the Oculus, right? <laughs> so this is a big, this looks like the dome. Look at these, see these? These holes, equidistant apart. Now on domes, what do we see? We see all these holes, these windows. Sometimes they're like this, sometimes they're round. But they all seem to have them. These ones may have been filled in. <laughs> Let's see. We get these everywhere. Ah. So what's going on here? More of these strange... Yeah, see it is. This is actually... It's almost like slate or something, you know, very, you know, thin long bricks. And they've been stacked in there as a lintel. I've never seen that before. That's, that's a lot of work. I mean, wow. And look, you can see this is all red brick. See this? Red brick. And all underground, guys. And look here, you can see that they've bricked this in. These were even bigger. And again, you can see remnants of artwork on the ceiling. So this is all underground. And look at that lintel. That's just... Wow. The work that would have to go in to making that is just... Seriously, that's, that, that's a lot of work. Why? Why? Why would they do that? When you can clearly just put a big bit of rock in there or wood or something but they've made it out of slivers and this as well see these are very thin as well they've done it the whole way around and i have no idea what this is um it says see the channels on the slanted wall to allow a waterfall to trickle down okay so they're saying that was a waterfall interesting right is this some, you know, water coming down? 
over the rippling over these rocks to oxygenate it. Is it hot? We're talking hydrogen here. See the channel started, blah blah blah, trickle down. So again, look at this artwork. See this is all falling off, but look at this. Okay, so Well, it says here, incredible fresco is still intact on these vaulted ceilings after being buried for thousands of years. And all, all brick. Look at that. The, oh. Talk about making work for yourself. So th there's, there's got to be some reason that they're doing that. Here we go. We can see some more of the artwork here. So this is all underground, okay? Oh, look at that one. So... This is the Louvre. We saw this the other day in another video I did, but look at this. Art ceiling covered in art. So this is what it would have looked like back in the day. Uh, have I got a better one there? Louvre interiors. Let's just go ceiling. Yeah, look at this. I mean... And remember, uh, we saw those squares as well. See how these are all in squares or in rectangles? And look at this artwork. So this, see there, there we go, there's all the squares. So that's what this is. Looks like they've found statues down there too. That's strange. Um, you know, look at this place. Wow. Not sure what's going on there. Is that a ceiling? Not sure. Artwork everywhere. So this is a full on old world building. And it would have looked like this back in the day. And it has a dome in there. So what did it look like from the outside? This maybe because look at this. They said that that his Nero's palace was three hundred rooms. I mean, look at it, and it was very big. And this has a dome on the top. I mean, what do you think? And that Oculus, you know, did that is that just a hole where there used to be a a, a dome over that? I'm not sure. Now I did get where was it? Okay, it must be somewhere else. Uh, I've got a picture of the outside of it and you can see that, that it's definitely underground. There's a little bit above ground still. Um, let's just do this. Uh, Domus Aurea. Okay. So this is it, apparently. Some of what's left on the top and you can see another massive dome there. Looks like it's just been ripped in half. This is it underneath in the ground. This is what it used to look like, they say. So there you go. This. So see here? Uh, it's, a, it's a better one. So you can see this is all underground. This is the top little bit that's sticking up, which they're saying, I guess, would have been this. And so you can imagine what's underground. And these, they're, they're put windows and stuff in there, so they're saying there's windows, but look at the size of these people compared to them. And how far down does this go? As you can see there, like, if, if that's been excavated, if that wasn't excavated and all that was sticking out was this thing and it was intact, the dome, you know, would that be called a stupa? So we have these, these sunken buildings everywhere underneath the Louvre. Uh, obviously that goes down a lot further as well. So how many things are actually underground around us? You know, are we literally walking on the roofs of these buildings and we're just seeing the domes and they're just being called stupas? So what is a dome? What is a dome? We get all these different types of domes. These are the onions. 
of the classic domes. And we get sort of you know, wider ones and ones with more of an angle on them. Domes everywhere, domes, domes, domes. So as you can see, this is a picture of the Washington Dome. Now it's only a small one. I'll see how big it. I think it's pretty. Uh, I think it's pretty tiny. Yeah. Um, and it's it's got this big antiquity. It's been cut off. It says Statue of Freedom, pedestal, Tholos. The something called Washington. Apothesis, drum bass. So it's got there's all these different uh, you know names for the different parts. But see, this is a cross section. So you can see the outside of the dome here, which we can see. But you can see inside there's another dome. And see on the top of this, it's got this um, half dome thing. I'll show you a better picture in a minute. But I just came across these. Uh, pictures and found them quite interesting. Here's another one. This, this is all to do with the Washington Dome and you can see quite clearly something inside it and there. See this half dome sort of thing and big spire. Here's another one. So if you want to look at these I think yeah just put a new United States Capitol Dome and you should be able to get them. Uh, but yeah that's what's inside a dome, but I do have a couple of better pictures, so let's have a look at them. And I wanted to also uh, do a shout out to Inga, who uh, let me know about Nero's Palace through my Facebook page. Thought I'd find it interesting, and I very much did, so thank you for that, Inga. And here's a book I found. Uh, we're back on Gallica. Gallica. This is from 1650, publication date. And it is uh, Max Vatican Building Prescribed a Lofty Emperor. <laughs> it's the Vatican. That's a very strange title. Oh. Okay, so it's a book. It's the book, and you can see we have domes. It's basically, um, it's not really plans, but it's, it's pictures of different parts, um, temples and things, buildings that are in the Vatican, floor plans, and we get some cross sections. So there's no actual, no actual measurements really in these, so I think they're just drawings. They're not plans. So let's see. Here we go. Here we have a dome. Um, just says, I don't know, not, not identified. So as you can see, this is a cross section, so they've cut it down the middle. This is the exterior and this is the, what's on the inside. So it looks just like the back wall, I think. And here we have the dome. And you can see up here, this is the outside. So they've, again, they're showing us that there's an inside dome in here. And a layering on the outside. And up here you can see there's, this is the outer covering. And it comes up over this. It just looks very antiquity. This one. They're even showing us the little spire that should be on the top. And again, it's got another dome inside it, and you can see this has got a little device on top of it. We've got stairs going up and down in here. So there's obviously some, some you know, space, some air in there, <laughs> and it's domed there as well. So we've got dome dome and that's a double dome so what's going on with domes is this the one I wanted no okay one minute okay so here's another picture as you can see this is the outer wall the skin the covering and inside we have another dome and we've got the same kind of device looking thing. They're, they're these cylinders and they've got vents or something in the side of them and this dome on the top of them. Um, as you can see there's a few 
a few good picks here on Gattaca. Here's another one. Um, and again, you can just see there's more going on here. This is the outside. Have the dome and on the top. There's, there seems to be two different types. Sometimes we have this half dome, like a large half dome thing on the top of the dome. And other times, and then it, it looks like we've got the cylinder here. It might have me up there too. But other times we don't have this. We've just got that uh, cylinder, this kind of thing with the half dome on it. Now this is a static generator, guys. Um, we've all seen these. You know, like these, where you put your hands on these things and your hair goes up. Okay, have a look at that. Electrostatic generator. Oops. Okay, so here we have this. Here we have this, and it looks like up here too. This, this looks like it, yeah, actually that does look the same as that. Just, you know of a different style and hooked in to this antenna with a cross on the top or a very stylized cross and on this one same thing so what's going on here look at this one I see this big dome at that okay so inside now this again this looks like a slightly different variation again this here looks like a large one of these uh, where was it there okay and this that's the what looks like a static generator and you can see it looks like they've got connections coming down from the outside into this dome here. We've got these little bits coming across. Can you see that? It's actually connected. And that connection goes up to this spire. So what do you think? And this one too. This is a different kind of a dome, but this, <coughs> excuse me, seems to have two of these uh, generators. Two of these, one on each side, and the dome in the middle. And again, you can see these are connected. This is uh, all connected. It's like a circuit. This one actually does have some measurements and things on it. This one, um, uh, let's have a look. I don't know, it's in the 1700s it's saying, I'm not sure. Again, look at this brickwork. Now, now that looks like that brickwork that we just saw in Nero's castle, doesn't it? Uh, where was Nero's castle? Uh, da -da 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 here. This kind of stuff. And there was that doorway with that big arch over it. This. Are these just all, you know, well, you know, this is what we're looking into. These definitely seem to be just energy generating machines. Um, there's a guy as well who makes domes. I've forgotten his name. He's from uh, Portugal, I think, somewhere. And he's been making domes and things for years and years. And when he was asked about domes and he looked at how to look at the old style domes and saw that there was metal and then that most of them are covered um, in like terracotta or in glazing or in tiles and things, which is an insulator. So <laughs> he just said, yeah, that's, that's just a, an energy generator. It's a conductor. So here we go. Like, you know, this one. Has stairs, so I'm not sure if there's more going up because you can see there's stairs going up and doorways here. So I'm not sure where the antenna is or, or if this is an internal thing, but you know, this is a thing. Here's a look at this one, it's just a, a large, different design. 
It looks like a double one. Isn't it? And of course we've got the spire. All connected in. Again, clearly there's a dome on the inside. Clearly. We've got little antennas popping off the side here. And you can see this comes out and it's connecting in. Is it? Or maybe that's just the outside. Okay, I could be wrong there. This is definitely connected to the outside. There. Up over the dome. Not touching here. So it's, but it's definitely over the top of the dome. It's just a big... It's got vents in it, but yeah, it's like a big static generator. And then on the top, what do we have? What a big spire. So are these just collecting just radiant static energy in the atmosphere, and just funneling, funneling it down to these electrostatic, you know, collecting sort of generator collectors? And then is this some kind of, I don't know, chamber to store the energy and then it's driven downwards? <coughs> So you can use it in the building. I mean, it might not even be stored. It might just be a free-flowing form of electricity. You know, they might not have needed plugs. It's probably all just, you know, you just build a device that can receive the energy and you can use it. But these, this is clearly, this is clearly some kind of device. Look at all this. And that's all the same. All looks the same. So there we go. Domes with what clearly looks like, you know, technology and tech tech inside. These, these look like static generators. They just do. You know, look at them. It's the, <laughs> the same thing. And, and these balls, by the way, you know, balls, you see them all around the tops of buildings as well, don't we? What are they all doing? Are they collecting? Are these some kind of... The, the, I don't know. I don't know. Does, it, you know. does the ambient energy get sucked down, brought down, put into these, converted into electro or static electricity? Somehow this dome has something to do with, I don't know, maybe some storage unit, and then it's just sort of funneled out to the house. I don't know, the building. Lots and lots of questions. So there we go. Some antiquitech in domes, you know, subterranean buildings with stupas, you know, popping out of the ground. So everything's <laughs> gone away. Are these stupas? Look at them. And then we have capital buildings like this. And, we, you know, subterranean buildings. So, there you go, guys. Stupas, domes, what's it all about? How much is underground? You know, what are these domes for? What were they, you know, it clearly looks like they were machines and they were harvesting some kind of energy. But what were they using that energy for? Because we don't find, um, you know, many, you know, device-looking things that they used. I mean, saying that as well, if they were... So this is all brick, this stuff lasts. You know, if they may have been using things that were made of metal and have just, you know, disintegrated or whatever, I don't know. But clearly they had tech and they were, they were living pretty well. And clearly they were, you know... Whoever built these buildings, they were bigger than us. I mean, it just does not not make... I understand grand buildings, but to this extent, it's just it's just ridiculous. Especially when these are bricks, guys. These are bricks, red bricks. Who lays them? Who's laid them all? No questions. Questions. All right, I'm rambling. I'm going to leave it there. So I hope you enjoyed that one. Stupas are they actually the tops of buildings sticking out of the ground? You know the domes, and what are the domes? They all seem to have some kind of general. The old ones look like they did. It'd be interesting to get inside and have a look at one. I'm not sure if there's any one that has done that, or if you can, or if there's any tours. But if you know anything, have any photos or anything, please let me know. 
pass, and we'll get into this a bit further. So thanks for spending some time with me, guys. I hope you enjoyed that one. As always, self-education is the way forward, guys, because if you're not self-educated, how would you know this stuff? <laughs> Have an amazing day, and I'll see you on the next upload. Bye for now.